right, all right. Hello. Hey. All right. All right. So are are you driving? You you it's your turn to drive? No, no, no. I'm actually on my home time. I am in um your PA for a wedding. So I am on my home time right now. Oh, okay. It's just uh, you. You got your you got your headset on, or what you what you got? No, on? I just got a I got a lot of noise, um, like road noise going on in the car right this second. Oh. So that's probably oh. what you hear. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I hear. But you don't have you you don't have no Bluetooth on or nothing like that, do you? No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We can we can we can work with it a little bit. We can work with it a little bit. So thank you for coming on. I do appreciate it. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. All right, all right. We about to get into it. We about to get into it right now. What's going on, guys? Locked out men here in the building. Yes, still on my four day. Well, not. Let me see. Sat Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Well, actually, I'm leaving Sunday. You know, fleet manager just called me up a few minutes ago. It was like, "Yo, lockout. You ready for me?" I was like, "Ready for what?" He was like, "I got a load for you that's leaving Sunday night." I was like, all right, at least at, at least Sunday night I'm good. I'm good. If it was if it was if it was Sunday during the day, that would have that would have hindered a lot of of uh of problems. So all right, so I'm glad you guys is here with me. If you guys like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell and that all button for more in today's podcast interview. Today I got a young lady that likes to cook on her truck. She's been a team driver. <laughs> she's uh she's been team driving with her uh with her husband for a while and come to find out that we have something in common let's find out hold on for a second let's let's find out what she has in common with me as i bring on vanessa lynn bryant to the show how you doing man Great. How are you? I am all right. I am all right. I'm all right. So why don't you do me a favor and introduce yourself to my listeners and let them know who you are and where you come from. Okay, guys. My name is Vanessa Bryant. I um, go by on my blog. I go by the Fancy Trucker. And I live in Wilson, North Carolina. and drive with my husband. And we're a great team. And in my part time but I'm not driving 70 hours a week. I also am a pepper chef rep. All right, all right. So you and your husband, um, how how long you guys been teaming together? We've been teaming, actually, today makes three years that we have been, um, I think, team drivers. Okay, Good okay. Who, yes. who was the, who, who was the, uh, who was the first, who was the first of, of, of the both of you that was in trucking first. He was. Yeah. He, he's driven something all his life and I rode with him for a little while and I decided that I'd like to take a shot at it too, but I had never driven anything. So I had to go to truck driving school. You know? All right. So I was just, I was just about to ask you, did he, did he, I was about to say, did he train you or did you go to school? So you mentioned you went to school. What, uh, what school you went to and how was the experience? Um, I went to Johnson Community College, um, JCC Truck Driving School, North Carolina Truck Driving School in Smithfield, North Carolina. And it is the most challenging truck driving school that they have on the East Coast. And we went um, five days a week, 12 hours a day from 6 to 6.30 in the morning to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. And it was very challenging, but I came out very prepared. All right, so you said this was you said this school was challenging. Now, I, you would yeah. think that's you would think that's a good thing. Why uh, why why you mentioned that it was challenging? What was all the challenges that you had to go through with this well, school? It was a lot of challenges. I had never even pulled a lawnmower or a boat behind my truck, my my trailer, and so here I am going to truck driving school with my pearls and my makeup on and my heels. Um, looking crazy walking up in there and you know I've never backed up anything ever and driven anything bigger than a car so it was you know, super challenging to me in you know in a short period of time to have to 
develop so many skills that you have to to be a you know really safe driver. And uh, they also were really particular about the um, FMSDA rules, so you had to know the green safety book in and out. There were uh, written tests along with driving tests. So it, you know, it, it was pretty it was pretty challenging, but like I said, I was super prepared when I came out um, to to do my job. Okay, okay. Now this sounds like a great now this sounds like a great uh school to drive for because majority of these trucking schools, uh, with the exception of, of a company sponsor school, look like this school actually took the time to transform you from a girly girl <laughs> with your with your makeup and high heels on to a professional right. truck driver. To uh Very to much a prof- start right there. Okay. Okay. So, so you you received your you received your license from uh from them. Uh, yeah. How how was how how did you feel about it after you after you received your license? You you felt that uh-huh. they that they gave you the the criteria you needed to actually come out here and do the damn thing. I do. And you know, that's so funny because that was our truck driving motto. We had a guy there that was from the Bahamas and that was our truck driving motto. Just drive the damn thing. And we did. Um, We just had to drive the truck. And, you know, I felt like it gave me the tools that I needed. Now, there is nothing, absolutely nothing to say for experience. Because until you actually do it and you get in a situation that you have to get yourself out of, there is no... There's nothing like experience, but I feel like that it was a lot better than some of those two-week driving schools because this was ten weeks long. I had, I want to say, almost 400 contact hours. So yeah, I really think that that is a great truck driving school for anybody, especially people that don't have any experience in in driving like I did. All right. So would you say? So would you say that your that your husband uh, that your husband was your was the one that influenced you to get in get into truck driving? He was. He was, yes. Greg is a great teacher. He um he just didn't know exactly how to teach me because I was coming from absolute no knowledge at all. So I think it was better that I went somewhere that could start me from the absolute bottom building blocks and then build up. All right. So how long? So how long you? How long again? How long you been a truck driver? You yourself? Um, I've been a truck driver since um, July of 2017. So two and a half years. We've been riding together for three. Okay. Okay. That's what's up. That's what's up. All right. So since you uh, came, since you came into the game, what, what was your first company that you started with? You don't have to mention the company name or nothing like that, but uh, what was the first company that you started with and what was the experience with them? Well, you know, we started with a really big company. We had done some homework and we started with a really big company and we found a very non-personal experience. If something happened, you call and you talk to three or four different people explaining your situation, trying to get some help, um, blah, blah, blah. It's a huge, large company. And we got very lost in the system. And we found out there were a lot of things that were promised that they didn't deliver on. Um, so that was not a great fit for us, uh, being in a really large company. Okay. So the large company kind of kind of lost in a lost in a sea of uh bureaucracy uh if if that's safe to say uh yeah absolutely safe to say and we were certainly um seat fillers and we were certainly just a, a truck number that's all we were there all right all right so y'all felt that that wasn't the right fit for you guys uh from there from from there where where you guys where where you end up at now where where are you at now well i'm a driver for jnr super and mm. we absolutely oh, oh, love that. Oh, oh, hold on, oh, hold on, right quick. Hold on, you, hold on. See that's there it is. There, there it is, y'all. Y'all see? Y'all see? Hold on, right quick. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There it is. That's that's the connection. That's our um. <laughs> that's that's our uh that's our connection with each other jay and our swoogle you know as a matter of fact i i, I just came home to a letter uh from jay and our swoogle actually it wasn't it wasn't nothing good or bad or nothing like that they was just sending me something about uh 
uh, I don't know. I don't know what that letter is, but I did get one from the de- from them today. So, how long you been uh, driving for Jay and Archfugo, and what's your what's your experience with them like? Um, pretty much, you know, we only stay with the other companies. They're really big companies. We only stay with them for less than a month. So, pretty much ninety nine percent of my driving career has been with Shugo. And oh gosh, we love them. We have the best dispatcher. She keeps us running. We have great equipment. Um, we're on our second new truck now. We run about two hundred and fifty thousand miles a year between my husband and myself. And we can't say anything bad about that company. They are great to work for. All right. See, that's now. See, that's what it was like. That's what it was like for me back in the day when uh, when I drove for them, you know. But see, my uh-huh. experience, my experience with them was was with the fleet manager. Now, you said that you got a that you oh. got a good fleet manager. And that's what that's what it was all about over there is it's the fleet manager. And that's what I tell everybody. If you come in and you get a good fleet manager with them. Uh, if you mm-hmm. get a good fleet manager, then I I would I would tend to think that your experience with that company will be on point. Unfortunately for me, uh-huh. uh, unfortunately for me, Matt left, and once he left, it kind of it kind of went downhill for me. So I had to go and uh, look for other opportunities. Now, would I say that JNR uh, Shrugel is still a good company to rock out with? Sure. You know, like mm-hmm. she said, they do have they they do have good equipment. They 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 do have uh anywhere between eighteens and I think now twenties, right? They got twenties in their right. Fingers, they right? are getting some twenties in. Yeah. yeah, so they got uh they got they they got good equipment. I I do give it to them as far as they you know take care of your equipment if your equipment is messed up and you know you take it to the uh take it to the um uh take it to the shop up in uh New Arm. Because that's that's mm-hmm. what I like. Columbus, right. I like Colum- I like Columbus too. But the guys up I in like New Orleans, yeah, the, I, I think I like the Columbus shop best. But yes, the New Orleans guys certainly take care of us too. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, uh, so you came, so you came in. Who who was your uh, who was your uh, recruiter? What, what was the who was your recruiter? And what was it that actually pulled the trigger for the both of you guys? You know, we did. We had done a lot of research, and there were just a few companies that we had narrowed it down to because you never know on a job hunt, um, hop from one place to another. That's never very good thing, and it's nice to get in and get some seniority and some longevity at a place. So we actually had narrowed Shugle down as one of our choices, and I think Brianna was the recruiter there, and. You know, and the funny thing is, they were not our first choice, and I wish they had been, but they they, they understood that they weren't our first choice. But when the, it wasn't working out so much with the first job, I called her and she said, absolutely, we're going to fly you to Minneapolis this weekend if you want to. I mean, they were just ready to jump on board with us. We had already laid the groundwork, and we've had pretty much nothing but good experiences from there. What was now? I don't want to be too personal or something like that. But did they offer you a a, a sign on bonus? And did did they since you've been there for two years now? Did they did they pay it out to you already? They did. They did. Um, they did do a sign on bonus, and they paid it out monthly over thirty months. So we are at the end of our contract now with them, or at the you know the sign on bonus. Part. Okay, so, so we've so, ended that. So you and your so you and your husband got got your sign on bonus what they paid out. Pretty much, yes. I mean, you know, um, some months we did not because if you go home, sometimes it's kind of hard to get your full sign on bonus if you miss a week or two. Sometimes it's hard to get that, which I think is kind of a performance bonus instead of a sign on bonus. To be honest with you, but yes, but we for the most part, I'd say eighty percent of the time we we got our sign on bonus. Okay, okay, that was up. That's what's up. All right. Mm-hmm. So so how was how how was the first time how how was it the first time you felt that you actually got behind the wheel of a truck? How how did it feel to you? You know, it was it was different. It was it was interesting because I had never and even then I wasn't by myself, but I was not with instructors and I had to ride with another lady who interestingly enough is a chef 
and I rode with her, and she had a 12-speed manual. And so, you know, changing gears was interesting. Actually getting out, you know, and, and being on the open road and learning how to do that was, was interesting. Exciting. Very exciting. My first dispatch was up past through New York City, up all the way to Buffalo from the south, and then I went all the way from Buffalo through Denver on 70, all the way to California. That was my second dispatch. So I was tried by fire. Okay, that was up, and it looked like you got in there. You did, and and, and like the like the model says, you got in and did the damn thing, huh? I did. I absolutely did. Yeah, I loved it right from the start. All right, all right. So you and your husband. So now you you and your husband, y'all did did they uh did you guys do travel to forty eight so far or or, or we have traveled forty five so oh, far. 40. We've been to forty. We've been to forty five states. So there's a, there's we haven't been as far north as Maine, um, New Hampshire, Connecticut, but ah. anything else anything else from that we we've been to. Yeah, I I have. I, I've been up. I, I've been I, I've been up all in the in the type north. I've been at, uh, as as far northeast as as Maine as all of that you just mentioned, and not uh-huh. a fan, not a fan of neither one of them. <laughs> no, not no, a fan. no. I'm yeah. We we don't care anything much about going up north and those tight little places or whatever. So we prefer to stay, you know, down south or certainly go out west. Not a fan. So between you and your you and your husband, you guys got like a uh like a like a set hours that you guys drive. Like you you drive during the day, he drive during the night, or do y'all super uh do y'all super team like you you do eight hours and you, and he do eight hours and y'all you know y'all y'all park for the night. How how's the structure between you and your uh you and your uh co driver, which is your husband? Well, it, you know, it really just depends on what we're running. Right now, we're on a, a UPS contract load, so I drive during the day because I'll drive my full 11 hours, and then he'll drive at night to minimize stopping. But if it's very short loads and we've got time, then we'll budget our time a little better if we're looking off a recap, and so we'll drive eight and a half, nine hours or so, pretty much till the other person's sleeper time is up. So it really depends on what we're doing. We budget our time really well according to to what job that we're doing at that time all right so, so you and your you what, what's what's life like uh with you and your husband on the truck what well, what, what, what is know, that it's like fun. it's fun most days um we get to have our meals together you know we get to shower together you know, we see each other which is something that a lot of over the road drivers don't do is see their spouse every single day and you know a lot of over the road drivers you know their marriages suffer because they don't have that interaction with their spouses so we have a great interaction every day and of course it gets er uh, sometimes like i want to run over him with the truck and he wants me to stop breathing his oxygen but that's you know that's to be expected because we're in such close quarters but i think it's great i can't imagine you know driving without him really well, some couples like now you guys. You guys is an older couple, and how, how long have y'all been married? How long y'all been married? Oh, we, we've only been married three years. We were newlyweds when we started this thing. Okay, okay. So y'all y'all been married for three years. So you pretty much know you know know what the other is feeling. Sometimes you know, like you know, if 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 a button is pushed or something like that. Uh, yeah. What would you What would you do? Just get from go up from the front seat, go in the back, and just you know hop on hop on the TV or the computer, or you know, yeah, or just let exactly. things die down a little bit, and then y'all come back together and be like, okay, this this is what's up. It's exactly you're exactly right. You know, you know what bus- buttons to push, and you know when they're getting pushed. So the best thing to do is just kind of, you know, you can't leave the room. So you know, you just. Go sit there, watch TV, you know, get on your iPad, that sort of thing, get on your phone, which is good for me because I have the second job where I sell cookware. And so I'll just, you know, start working my business or something like that when when those times when you want to take a deep breath. I got you. I got you. So let's let's talk about your let's talk about your hobby. You're 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 in this uh 
you're in this Facebook group. What, what is it called again? Pampered Chef? Pampered I sell Pampered Chef, Chef yes. There, uh, it's a uh, high-end cookware products, and they have um, lots of appliances, um, air fryers, um, quick cookers, that sort of thing that help you save time, save money, and certainly save effort in the kitchen while making some really tasty meals. I feel like a lot of people don't cook very often and they choose to eat out because they just don't want to have the hassle of spending. Uh oh. Hold on. Hold on for a second. Hold on. Okay. Can you hear me? I think I just got cut off. Hold on, right quick. Hold on. Yep, we we got cut off. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we got cut off in the middle of uh <laughs> in the middle of you talking. We did. Somebody, yeah, somebody was calling me and all like that. So sorry about that. All right, so you so continue on. You was you were saying about Pepper Chef. Well, you know, it just helps people save time, and you know, I feel like that that's a reason that a lot of people don't cook and don't eat healthy meals. It's because they don't know how, they don't have the right equipment, they just don't want to take the time to do it. So I provide healthy recipes. I provide really innovative cookware and um, you know stuff to help you save time and make your cooking life a lot easier. Now, what's the, what's the name of the group? The group that I invited you to, yes. that I'm doing right now, it's called Pampered Chef Mystery Pamper. Host Party, which okay. means that everybody okay. that goes, That's what yeah, gets a chance to be my host. Um, I don't have a host. I don't have a particular host, so that all the orders are placed, and whoever I pick out at the end of the party gets to be my host, and they get all the freebies that go along with hosting, and they didn't right. have to do anything. Okay, so it's so if I'm if I'm right, if I pull this up right, mystery host pepper chef party. That's that's it. Yeah. All uh-huh. right. So let's uh let's bring that up right quick. So this is the this is the uh this is the group that uh that you invited me to, and I and I and I do appreciate it. I wasn't sure about. It. I was like, who's this? Huh. I was like some that's like somebody invited me to the group, so I was like, cool, let me go ahead and uh get to it. So what made you what what made you what made you decide decided to uh to to make this group? Well, you know, I've never done a mystery host party and I've heard about it. I've done tons of paper chef parties where I had a host and she invited her friends and we did a party and she got lots of stuff, but I thought, so, you know, this is really neat because nobody knows who's going to win the host credit and who's going to win the prizes. I give away prizes every day, and we play games every day. And at the end, um, I think it'll be really neat to draw somebody out that doesn't know that they're going to get free stuff. So I think I, I just kind of wanted to surprise somebody and let them know how easy it can be to get some lots of nice cookware and you know and how fun my job is my job is so fun i absolutely love what i do so how long you been now how long you been doing this for how long you been doing this for i've only been doing this since november um but i'm completely in love with it and i've been in love with the product for a long time and i actually out of the 50 members in our group i was the top salesperson in january and february um out of 50 of our salespeople in our group, and I had just started in November. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Pampered Chef Party. So if anybody Pampered if anybody that's on Facebook and that's interested in some good uh recipes and some and some you know good fun, definitely check out uh let me bring it back up. Definitely check out Pampered, what's it called again? Pampered Chef Group, Mystery Pampered Chef Group. Uh yes. Look and like I have she a personal has, page. Look like and it's she, the fancy. Oh, oh go I'm ahead. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was we saying. Look, at the same time. Looks looks like you have like a book or something like that. I'm looking at the banner. It says including new products or something with the spring catalog. We so. do. Yep. We have okay. a catalog. I have a website. Um, and I have a, a business page. And I'm the fancy trucker. All one word. And oh, that's, you say fancy? Is that on? Is that on YouTube? Fancy trucker. That. 
the fancy trucker that is just on it's just on facebook and i'm the fancy uh, trucker on instagram on instagram as well uh, okay the fancy let's see if i can get that the fancy this is what f-a-n-c-y uh-huh uh, trucker t r u c e yep. uh-huh. Uh, the fancy trucker. There you are. There you are. Let me bring that up. There you are. And I'm going to click follow on that. So you guys make sure you, you definitely too. click follow on that. But this is her uh, Instagram right here where you guys can uh, go and uh, chat with her personally. If y'all interested in getting uh, getting with her on her recipes and on her uh, items that she uh, that uh, that she sells. And all yeah, like that. So, about her, yeah, at, at least a hundred dollars in free that, stuff just uh, for not doing a whole lot of anything. Oh, that is that is what's up. All right, so being uh so being the lady driver, uh being you know being the lady uh a lady driver in trucking, how do you feel about how do you feel about being a female in a male dominated industry? Um. Well, you know, I think that we are being represented a little bit more now than used to be. I think that you do see more female drivers than you used to, but you're right. It is certainly a man's world. Um, most of the time, I think that the men treat me very nicely. They treat me nicer than they may would treat another man. Um, and, you know, they'll let me go first sometimes. But, you know, I do get the... Honey, do you want me to back that in for you? You know, I get some kind of sexist comments, you know, and people are like, you know, think that I'm not a driver, that maybe I'm just a lady hanging out at a truck stop. So sometimes women do have to deal with a kind of a double standard because you're right, the the men are the truck drivers. So it's interesting, but I'm going to say that most of the time I get a tremendous amount of respect from the male drivers, and they're very nice to me. Okay, okay. Now they now the guys that comes over and try to flirt with you and all like that. I guess uh I guess all the brakes pump when they find out that your that your husband is what you want a truck, right? Yeah, the smart ones do. Yes, I tell <laughs> them really quickly. That, oh, you that, say the smart ones have, do. Yeah, the smart ones just walk away, and you know, and they you know they don't mean any disrespect. And then when my husband sticks his head out of the curtains, then then the not smart ones they run away too. So you know, um, most of them, you know, I guess it's they don't know that I have a husband because he's sleeping while I'm driving. But I'm quick to say, you know, thank you, but I'm married, and most people are very nice and walk away, and you know, right. they apologize. At least some of them will respect that, you know. You got some, you got some a holes out here that don't. So, but uh, but uh, if but if the Mister needs to stick his head out every once in a while, that is what's up. So shout out and salute to him <laughs> to, to still watch out for you. Uh, he you know, does now. He's very very protective of me. All right. So still being a female in this in this game, right, Quay? What, what what advice would you give uh, a, a a young female new jack that's uh, that's that's thinking about pursuing uh, the trucking career? Well, I certainly think that it's something that that anybody can do. Um, I think that it's really great that women drivers are more prevalent. I think women as a whole are more cautious. I think that we're more careful when we're back in. I think we're more careful when we're driving. We watch our speed. And I think companies really want to hire women drivers because, you know, our accident rate is much lower and our safety rating is, you know, is much, much higher. So, you know, if you have never tried it, it's not as hard as you think it is once you kind of get the hang of it. And it is a lot of work. But there's a lot of rewards. You can see the country on somebody else's dime. It's a great thing. And companies are really, really chomping at the bit to hire female drivers right now. Okay. So I think it's a great profession. Now, now you mentioned that, yeah, we, we could see the – we you could see. Now, look. I'm I'm going to tend to agree to disagree with Vanessa right quick. Now I'm I'm sorry, <laughs> Vanessa. Now you can see the world. You can see the world if you never been. You know if you if you was like me and never left the state that you was at, and you start going into these different states, then yeah, you know you you will see. But the only problem is is that yeah, 
it's going to be from shipper to shipper, from receiver to receiver. Now, it's up to you to, you know, if you get like a, a nice little 10 or a nice little 34 or something like that, that you'll take advantage of of getting right. out of the truck and, and, and sightsee a little bit or something like that. But sometimes it also you know what it also depends on the company that you go to too so if you if you are with a company that's like that that likes to like run you like run you crazy and and they and the only thing they care about is the is the time and all like that and they they give you the load and then they rush you to get there and all like that and you not able to you know, take advantage of it, then yeah, that probably might be the wrong company. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm just well, and time management is really big, whether you're solo or whether you're a team. You know, and you have to manage your time. That you have a little downtime, and you know, I find that Uber and Lyft are super great things. They'll pick you up from a shipper. They'll pick you up from truck stops. You know, and you can just do your homework on Google now and find something really neat to go see if you do your homework and you do and you you do do great time management you have opportunities we've been to san francisco you know we've been to a lot of different places from truck stops that we've had ubers you know take us to so it's not terrible but you're right the 90 percent of the time you see the world from truck stop to truck stop and shipper to shipper but if you you know if you make the time there's a lot of really great things to see out there that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, check this out, Vanessa. I I got a I I got a I got some quick questions for you, right quick. So you ready? I'm ready. All right. So you love being that you like to you know cook on your truck. These these first few uh, these first few is gonna probably test you a little bit. So let's go ahead and start. Breakfast or no breakfast? Oh, breakfast breakfast all the time so what when mm-hmm. when when you do when you do breakfast what we what we eating vanessa what we eating for breakfast well it just depends if i'm in a super hurry we're getting some um egg and bacon and cheese muffins that i mm. made up the night the day before mm. or we're getting a bowl of cereal or a bowl of oatmeal you know that's generally a standard breakfast for us is, you know something quick or something that's already prepared that oh, we cook. Okay. now see you 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 had me at Bacon and eggs, and you you lost oh, me. Oh, I make the best you, bacon, egg, and cheese muffins. Uh, see, you you lost me at the cereal. Damn it, man! But I <laughs> but you got but you got me at the bacon and eggs though. All right, okay. got all right. Gas or electric stove? Gas. Gas stove. Why? Why you feel? Why mm-hmm. you feel gas stove is better than electric? Well, I like the gas stove. I feel like that I can control the heat a little mm-hmm. bit better. On the on the gas stove, and I guess it's pretty much what you what you get used to. But I like the way that gas heats up very quickly. You know, you, you can turn the flame on and heat things up really quickly, and you can simmer, you know, at a really low temperature. So I just uh, like gas. Okay, Taco Bell or McDonald's? Ooh, hmm. Well, I'm going to have to go Taco Bell because I can eat Mexican food every single day of my life. It's my absolute favorite. So, okay. You know, okay. I'm not a big taco. I'm not a big Taco Bell girl, but but since the Mexican food's there, I'm going to have to see that one. All right. See, I'm not a fan of Taco Bell. I, I used to be a fan of Taco Bell back in the day, but no, nah, not not anymore. Cash or credit <laughs> or cash or card? Oh, um. You know, that's interesting for a truck driver because, you know, we used to just be all card. But in this age of, what do you call it, ID fraud or whatever, people just love to steal our card stuff. So we've actually gone old school and we tend to uh, pay with cash lately. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. So you guys go to like, go to like an ATM right quick, take out a little bit of money and just uh, let that roll for the week or something like that. Yeah, I, I find it's easier than being in California and your card gets compromised and you've got 20 bucks to figure out how to make it back. So, yeah, okay. we've kind of gone a little old school. Okay, I got you. I got you. Now, since you now since it's you and your husband uh, that you guys that you guys team drive, do you guys get uh, and I always wondered, you you guys get separate settlements, right? Yes. Okay. We do. We do. Now, when you guys get separate settlements, did you come? 
did did y'all come together before y'all decided to team and say, hey, let's uh let's open up a joint account and let's have all our money go in into a joint account, or do you guys have like a separate a, a joint account where y'all where y'all could put some of the money in there, but y'all have your own separate personal accounts? No, you know what? For the first time in my life, I trust my husband explicitly, and he trusts me. And before we ever really teamed, we had a joint account, and it all goes into the same pot. They take our miles, they split them right in half, and so both of us, you know, make the same amount of money, but it all goes into the same place. Oh, that check, that checking account is fat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> all right, ice cream cone or waffle? Oh, waffle! Oh, you like the you, you like the waffle? Okay, okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's uh, let's 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 see if you uh, <clears throat> let's see about your R and B right quick. Aretha Franklin okay. or Diane or Diana Ross? Diana Ross. Diana Ross. Uh, you 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 uh, mm-hmm. you, you loving Diana Ross? Okay, okay. Uh, chicken or beef? Chicken. Chicken because it's healthier. Mm-hmm. There you go. There um, you go. No, just because I like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> everything tastes like chicken, huh? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Prince or Michael Jackson? Ooh, that's a tough one right there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to have to go Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson? I'm going to have to go MJ on that one, yes. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, so what do you what what do you say, uh, pop or soda? Actually, we say Coke. You say- <laughs> In the south, everything everything's a Coke. Every everything's a Coke, huh? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> you can say I will. Yeah, everything's a Coke. I'll take a Coke. What kind of drink do you want? Um, Sprite. So yes, but everything's a Coke. Everything In, where, uh, I, where I'm from. <laughs> everything's a Coke, huh? All right, Netflix, mm-hmm. Netflix or Hulu. Um, Netflix. Netflix. No, mm-hmm. why? No, why? Why you say? Why you say Netflix? Why I say Netflix? Mm, I got some great series I got going on on Netflix, and my husband is a huge um, scary movie guy, so he can just you know dial up the scary movies, and there'll be one that we hadn't seen. So okay. I feel like I have a little more variety for what we like to watch on Netflix. Okay. That's what's up. And uh, being that you're a female, and I'm assuming you like to shop and do some online shopping, eBay, Just a bit. eBay or Amazon? Oh, Amazon Prime. Amazon Prime all day. <laughs> yes, all day, every day. I feel it. I feel it, man. I feel it. All right. So take a moment to think about the different aspects of being the truck driver in the trucking industry today. What would you like or what's your dislikes about it? Well, you know, I like having the freedom to, you know, to operate pretty much on my schedule. We can set our schedules and, you know, budget our time. I, it's a stressful job, but it's certainly, I was a nurse for 20 years before I became a truck driver, and it's certainly not nearly as stressful as that job. And um, I find that I see a lot of things, that I experience a lot of different cultures from different parts of the country. I get to travel with my husband and my puppy, Kipper. Um, So, you know, we are afforded some things that a lot of people aren't. Those are the advantages. Um, It pays pretty well, and we're pretty happy. Um, The disadvantages is that I don't see my family a lot. You know, we stay out a month at a time or Mm -hmm. so. We live in a pretty cramped up space, and it I think it takes the special people that two people and a dog can subsist in a very small space. Um, I do get to shower at truck stops, and um, that's probably not the greatest advantage of trucking. Um, truck stops sometimes aren't the nicest places in the world, um, and I hear a lot of really colorful language from lots of truckers. Right, right. So, yeah, so it has advantages and it has disadvantages. But I think the advantages outweigh the disadvantages for me. All right, all right. That's that's what's up. That's what's up. So do you think the professionality of the truck driver diminished over the years, though? I think so. I, I think that um, 
that some, and I think that really depends on the driver. I think not in our case, but I think a lot of cases you see drivers that don't um, care enough about themselves to keep clean and to watch their weight and to be healthy, you know, and to be respectful. I, I see that a lot. You see a lot of drivers that really let a lot of things go over time, um, males and females. Okay, that is what's up. That is what's up. Vanessa, man, I, I'd definitely like to thank you for uh, for showing up and showing out on the uh, podcast today. I do appreciate it. Um, I, I, you know, I did a, I did a sorry, um, I did a sorry podcast about about a couple of days ago about a young man helping out uh helping out this female and uh, and the husband was uh was kind of being belligerent on him uh because of his color uh yeah. helping helping out his uh helping out his wife you know his wife was on it actually his wife was on the ground dying and the young man d uh did CPR or started to do CPR on his wife to save her life and uh, uh -huh. and the husband was you know feeling kind of feeling some kind of way my question to you is um my question to you is probably kind of kind of a hard question to answer but uh i, I want to get your opinion on it how do you do okay. you think do you think there is racism in trucking you know what i'm gonna have to say that you know i think there's racism in anything um, I, I, you know, I see that, um, especially being from the South, I see that there's racism in, in, in pretty much anything they can be pulled into. But I'm going to have to say that I don't see a lot of racism in trucking. I feel like that truckers are kind of one big family. And I have so many trucking friends that are all different nationalities. You know, I meet, you know, white people, black people, Hispanic people. Um, you know, I have I've had a really great Indian friends that I went to trucking school with. So I don't know. I, I'm not sure like that we're kind of a, a funny family and a unique family and it, that it, it, it doesn't have really much anything to do with race. I think that that race doesn't play as big a priority as it does in politics and, you know, and schools and all kinds of other things. I, I don't think that trucking has a lot of racism. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. All right, well, Vanessa, Vanessa Bryant, y'all. Let me give you a round of applause right quick. Thank you, thank you for uh, showing up on the podcast. I really do appreciate you coming on the show. How how would they – now, I know we talked about it earlier, how they can connect with you online. But, again, go, go and uh, give your social medias out. All right, guys. So I am Vanessa Lynn Bryant. That's my Facebook. And I am the Fancy Trucker, all one word on Instagram. And I am the Fancy Trucker, Independent Pamper Chef Consultant on Facebook on my business page. So look me up and I can help you get some free stuff and I can help you update your kitchen and I can help you upgrade your truck kitchen too. Okay, that's what's up. Upgrade, upgrade the truck kitchen. What, 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 uh, what, man? What, what we got on the truck to cook with? What, what, what all you got on the truck oh, to cook God. with? I've got a skillet. I've got a microwave. I have got a new wave oven, like a convection oven. I've got a slow cooker. I got a refrigerator. <laughs> I can cook just about anything on my truck. Did did I the re did the refrigerator anything. come with the truck? It this one did not. We actually bought this. Now the ones that, that they're having do have refrigerators in them, but the one that we have did not. And we actually we had bought it separate. We had already had it. So yes, the refrigerator did not come with this truck, but the new trucks that Jay and Archie are getting all come with refrigerators. Okay, you all, let me ask you this: Do you got a do you guys got a double bunk in there or a single bunk? We have a double bunk, and we use the top one for space. For the space, we don't use exactly. The That's mm -hmm. because I'm I'm kind of thinking with a refrigerator in there with a with a dog and a and, and another human being. That space back there is like real real cramped in what it is. Yeah, so we use the, the top bunk for space, for storage. Okay, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, Vanessa, thank you for showing up on the uh, podcast today. I really do appreciate it. Uh, 
let me go ahead and uh, get on up out of here. You guys, if you guys is interested in coming on to the show, definitely get at me at lockoutmanpodcast at gmail.com. This the hand that the hand that's inviting you right here. Just like the hand that invited Miss Vanessa to come on here to talk about her experience and her trucking career and her and her food. I need that food. <laughs> Yes, need that food. If you guys want to get at me, definitely hit me up at uh, at the Instagram at Lockout Men. And if y'all want to join the, you know, join the show, head over to Facebook and you can get on with Lockout Men podcast the page. And Lockout Men makes the call to Facebook group. You guys can also check out Mystery Host Pampered Chef Party on Facebook and her and her Instagram as well as the Fancy Trucker. So definitely make sure you guys go over there and follow uh, the Fancy Trucker, Vanessa Lynn Bryant. Thank you for being here. <coughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome, and you and you are part of the LOM community. So don't be no stranger. Okay, sounds good. Take uh, it easy, Lockett, man. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome, Vanessa, and thanks for coming on. You take it easy. All right. You too. Have a great night. All right. All right. Thanks all right. All right, everybody. That was Vanessa. Vanessa Lynn Bryant, the fancy trucker, the pampered chef. So if you guys, like I said, again, if you guys is interested in following her and finding out some good recipes and some good, uh, and some good kitchen truck kitchen tips definitely get with her well that is it for this show i really do appreciate you guys watching if you like if you like more content like this don't forget to like subscribe comment share and hit that bell and that all button for more content like this definitely stay tuned for the next podcast interview it could be anybody it could be you it could be you i don't know let's find out all right you guys take it easy. I have a blessed one, and I'll come back to you with another video, podcast video, podcast video. Peace.